Hey everybody, welcome back to C-Sharp Tutorials for Beginners. This one is number four, where we are going to talk about variables and data types. All a variable is, is a container to store some data. So there are a ton of different types in C-Sharp, and you can have variables of pretty much all of those types. So we're just going to go over a few very common ones that you're going to see a lot, especially in these tutorials. So the types we're going to talk about are text types, number types, and Boolean types, which we'll get to what that means in just a second. Text variables in programming that have more than one character are typically called string variables. Considering we've had a string in our program this whole time, let's start there. To create a string variable, we want to say string space the variable name, which we can call our message, semicolon. So now we have created a variable called our message of type string. We're getting this green warning because our message is declared but never used. So we're not using it. So let's use it. So let's replace hello world with our message. Now we're going to get an error because unassigned local variable our message so we're trying to use our message but we haven't told the program what our message is right now it's only an empty container so what we need to do is assign our variable the first way to assign a variable is to assign it when you declare it so you could say string our message space equals space a string so anything in here will be assigned to our variable our message so we can put in our hello world and now the program is happy we can run it and we get hello world variables can also be assigned on a new line so we could say our message equals hello world explanations so we assigned it here when we created it so here we're actually reassigning it and visual studio is pointing that out to us right here unnecessary assignment of a value to our message because it knows we're giving it a value and then before we do anything with it we're giving it a new one so we might as well just say that you will find cases down the road where you may want to declare a variable and then somewhere later assign the variable and that is legitimate as well next up we have numbers so in programming, you're going to be dealing with a lot of numbers, and there are two main types of number variables. The first kind are integer numbers, which are whole numbers. The next type are floating point numbers, which have decimal point. Now the number type you are going to see most often is probably going to be int, and that represents just a regular old number. It could be Five, but its maximum is up to 2.147 billion. Now, if you've played video games, you might have actually seen this number as the maximum amount of an item or money that you can carry. That limit would be there because the developer used an int type. Now, if you need a bigger number, you would use a long type. A long type can be a massive number whose maximum is up to this gigantic number here. So I could actually put that here and you could use that in your program. So if I put this number, try to assign this number to the int, it's going to tell me, hey, cannot convert type long to int because it's finding a number that is of size long but you're trying to assign it to an int so at this point some of you may be asking well why wouldn't you always use a long if it can handle more numbers so the answer to that is memory so how much ram does one of these use well an int uses 32 bits, which seems like a tiny amount. Longs, on the other hand, use 64 bits. So while this is a tiny amount of data, especially in 2022, 
this is double that. So depending on what you're doing, say you're generating billions of lines of data or a procedurally generated world that just has an absurd amount of numbers in it, that really adds up fast. So always be aware of when and where you might use these two types. The next type of numbers are floating point numbers. And the first, aptly named float, so we can have float my float, and that could be 5.01. And to end a float, you have to put the letter F. That's because it is a literal type, and the C-sharp compiler needs this F to know it is a float. So similarly to ints, floats take up 32 bits. But important for floating point numbers is that floats have seven digits of precision, which means you could have 1.234567 or you could have 12.34567. So if you change this to 1.234567789, then when you run this, this my float will actually round this up and contain 1.234568 because it can have at most seven digits of precision. More commonly seen than a float is the double. So we can say my double, and that can be some larger amount. The double takes 64 bits and has 15 digits of precision. Less commonly seen, but still worth mentioning, is the decimal type. Let's make decimal my decimal. And it can have this massive amount of precision. It has to be followed by the letter M, kind of like the float was followed by F. It has, it takes 128 bits of memory, but it can have 28 digits of precision. So if you need an extremely high fidelity number, say maybe for finance or simulation of some kind, this may be your type. But be warned, this type is slow. So if you don't need this kind of precision, maybe you need a double. And if you don't need this kind of precision, maybe you use a float. That way you save memory, you save processing time. Pick the right type for the application. So the last thing I want to go over is a Boolean. Now, a Boolean is a data type that can only be one of two things, true or false. Now, you use Booleans in a lot of conditional statements like if this, then that. So a lot of Booleans are named things like is tutorial boring, and that might be equal to false. But you might also have a Boolean that's is tutorial long, and that might be true. So later in the program, you might check, is the tutorial long? And if this variable contains true, then it might do something. Or if it contains false, it might do something else. So those are really important variables for the future of these tutorials. That about wraps it up for the very basic data types and usage of variables. Next up, we're going to play with some operators and put our variables to use. Thank you for watching, everybody. I do appreciate you. Hopefully this is helpful. Happy coding. And as always, take care.